Okay, um, I've done a, there are a bunch of example problems here. So I'm not going to go through them. They're all the same type of questions. Find the stresses on a 20 degree plane. Shown. I'm going to let you work these. So you should work all of these problems. Here are the answers. The, um, oh, hold on a sec. So, yeah. What this one shows that's slightly different is in my end result, notice I'm on, is there, there are my stresses on a 20 degree plane, which is what was asked for. So whether I put it on that 20 degree plane or that 20 degree plane doesn't matter. I show the same answers. And then as a little bonus in a sense, I've shown these stresses on the plane 90 degrees to that. And again, as I mentioned before, how do you find the stresses on a plane 90 degrees in real is 180 in more. If it's 180, it doesn't matter whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. So in other words, I find the coordinates of this point, I simply go straight across the circle, get the coordinates of that point. A similar geometry, very easy to find. And I end up with the stresses on all these different planes. Do this one. What we're trying to find is the stresses on that plane. Here's the answer. In this particular answer, I don't give the numerical values for the stresses on the planes perpendicular to the 30 degree plane, but um, you can figure them out by going across the circle. So in other words, if I go all the way across here, find the coordinates of this point on the far left shown, and that will give me the stresses on that plane and that plane. Okay, here's a different type of problem. This problem says, find the plane on which sigma 1 acts. So we have to take a little bit different approach, but we start out the same way. Here are the given stresses. We draw the circle. This problem is actually quite easy to solve. Because now, you know, we find the circle, we have all the properties of the circle, we have all that stuff. And um, I'm going to use this table, but I'm going to use it in a different way. Because my question is, what plane does sigma 1 act? I know the value of sigma 1, that's easy to get by drawing the circle. Which plane does it act on? Well, I have to figure it out from more, from the more world. The more world shows me sigma 1. I can't get sigma 1 simply by looking at the real world. The more world gives me sigma 1, so I have to look here and I find sigma 1. Well, so when I do my table, I'm not going to begin, I'm not going to begin by filling this out because I don't know the real world. I do know the more world. So I'm going to begin by filling out that line. What do I have to do? I have to look at the more circle. If we've labeled everything properly, uh, here's my circle, 3, negative 10 on the horizontal plane. What I want to do now is in more, go from the horizontal plane to sigma 1. Well, what do I do to do that? I start here, I end here. Where do I go? I go like that. What is that angle that I go? Well, we've already figured out that angle. That angle is beta, which is 78.7 degrees. So when I'm filling out my 
table, I guess they're the horizontal plane, I go 78.7 counterclockwise, in other words. Like I say, we're starting there, we're ending there, I'm going counterclockwise. 78.7 degrees. So now I work this in reverse. That's horizontal, that's horizontal. That's this more world angle. Divide by two to get the real world angle. I flip the directions. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow these instructions in the real world. So what am I going to do? It says, it says I start at the horizontal plane, go 39.4 clockwise. Okay, that's easy. There is a horizontal plane. I go 39.4 clockwise. And there is my plane. What are the stresses on that plane? Well, the coordinates of the point. The coordinates points are simple. It's 11.2, my sigma 1 value. Now, if I go, now, what happens is I can go 180 degrees across, I get my sigma 3. And so if I want to fill out this whole square, what I get is sigma 3 on the other plane. So I end up with sigma 1, sigma 1 there, sigma 3 there. It always works out that way, that sigma 1 and sigma 3 are 90 degrees apart. Why are sigma 1 and sigma 3 90 degrees apart in real? Because they're 180 degrees apart in more. So it always works that way with sigma 1 and sigma 3. Okay, you do this problem. Same thing, draw the Mohr circle, find the plane on which sigma 1 acts. And to do that, oh, so, okay. Pause the video, solve this problem. Here's the beginning of the answers. You got the circle, got all the information about the circle. The first thing that you always have to do, of course, is get the circle and all the properties of the circle. Everybody gets that, so it's not difficult. Then all you have to do is fill in the table. So in this particular case, I'm, my goal is to get to sigma 1. I pick a place to start, which is the horizontal plane. And again, I have to fill this line out first. So I start at the horizontal plane. I go 37.3 degrees counterclockwise. So when I write I, this is so that's the horizontal plane, that's the horizontal plane. This is half of the more. This is opposite of the more. I then follow the instructions. I follow these instructions in the real world. So it says horizontal plane, I draw a horizontal plane. 18.65 clockwise, I go 18.65 clockwise. There I am. I'm on that plane. And on that plane is my sigma 1, which I already know to be 8.7. I could fill in the whole box. And I'm just going to have sigma 1 on one of them, sigma 3 on the other one. Sigma 1, sigma 3. What this illustrates is if I didn't want to start on the horizontal plane and wanted to start with the vertical plane, I end up at the same place. I Take a look at that. It just shows that um, it doesn't matter when you do this problem whether you start with this point that you know or start with that point that you know.